Oh my good god. Hello everybody. What's up? I have returned after a uh a week hiatus. I gotta say, you know, I really needed that. Not like uh not like I was really dying for it. like, oh my god, I work nine to five at the fucking place with the things and my boss is nasty to me. No, I just really didn't feel like uploading and that, that I felt like doing other things and I just I feel real good about myself, you know. Um I feel like I've kind of rekindled the passion I had for uh uploading at this point, you know, making videos. I haven't rendered anything major in Sony Vegas and God knows how long. However, I have been recording TCGO in the background, and I now have a match of uh, one with every single one of my decks that I currently have at the moment. So, you know, I got that going for you TCG uh, folks. Now, right here, I'm actually using my dark deck, which I don't think I've actually gotten, like, a real big opportunity to talk about. We kind of saw how it worked in that video I had against Wild Chase, but he was the one using it, so since I'm the one using it, I'm going to be talking about it for a little bit. But I lead with the Cleffa, um, you know, just in case I want to shuffle out my hand. But I see that he has a Cleffa, and I have a Larvitar, a Rare Candy, an Energy, and a Tyranitar in my hand. Now, in terms of early game setups, that's about as good as it's ever going to fucking get. I mean, like, a Rare Candy and a Tyranitar, getting T-Tar up by turn 2 is what makes this deck really fantastic. I've since put Rare Candies in a lot of my decks. You know, I was too stubborn to go out and get one because I was like, oh, I'm not really going to need them. Yeah, you know, you could you could really use them. It's They're nice to have. So, um, what that lets you do is it lets you skip from Stage 1 to Stage 3. So, as you can see, I didn't even need to put down that Pupitar that I drew. But right now, I see a uh, I see a Ponyard, and then I see a Pecom. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and Pecom out for something. I do have an Oak for next turn, but I'm going to Eek for now uh, just to shuffle that out anyways. I don't really want them getting set up uh, faster than I do. So I see that I have a Junk Arm, and I also have a Pokemon Collector. So what I could do is I could Junk Arm uh, stuff that I pull up from Pokemon Collector in order to get a Pokemon Communication in order to evolve some things of mine. That seems like a wonderful plan. But he sends out a Metagross, and that's actually really interesting because um, it makes it like kind of like a like a super retreat aid, like Dodrio. If you have any Psychic Energy attached to your active Pokemon, then uh, the retreat cost for that Pokemon is zero. And I've never seen that Metagross before, and let me tell you, I would love to make a deck revolving around that thing because that seems really, really cool. You know, it just has to have one Psychic Energy on it, and it's reduced to zero. I don't know what set that's from, but it's pretty awesome. So, uh, going back to my side of the field, things are looking somewhat okay. I mean, I'm having trouble evolving, um, not really too much. Um, I guess I'm still kind of at like an energy deficiency as well. Um, there was that one turn I forgot to attach, but, um, I am definitely getting set up quicker than he is. Uh, this probably isn't as fast as I would like to be getting set up, but I'll take it. You know, it's actually faster than it's been working in a while, so... Um, I do decide to get my Mandibuzz because I noticed that Punishment, um, Punishment is an attack that does 40 damage and it does 60 more if you hit a stage 2 Pokemon, so I'm like, okay, you know what, if I can get this thing set up sooner, drag that thing out, I can do 100 damage to it, and then, you know, things, so... Uh, Metagross does have 130 HP. I'm taking some time to further examine it some more. And um, I notice it as a psychic weakness as opposed to dark weakness. Doesn't really surprise me because it has the, the steel type and everything. But um, he is going to go ahead and Pokemon Collector get some things out, put them on the bench. And that's when I notice that this is a modified Chandelure deck. And Metagross is just, you know, nice and happy letting those guys go in and out for free. Anything with the psychic energy as opposed to uh, Dodrio just giving everything to less. So if you're running a full Psychic deck, Metagross is easily the superior option. You just attach one energy and it eliminates any retreat cost whatsoever. Um, I find that pretty handy. So I think I was asleep on that turn, and all, like, all that really ended up happening was I drew into an energy. So whatever, you know. Um, I thought I would be kind of, I don't know, like the Chandelure Dodrio deck with uh, Sometimes Trainer Lock, I think like the one that Fizzy just uploaded. That one's been kind of popular as of late, and uh, this deck just kind of stops it in its tracks because Mandibuzz, you know, being able to attack the Stage 2s for super much damage, and it does like fucking 200. Um, Titar, you know, being resistant to the Psychic. Uh, my issue is, is that I'm not really able to retreat Titar that freely, seeing as how it does have a retreat cost of 3. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start spreading those damage counters, as a matter of fact. I mean, that does put 20 on my own Cleffa, but I just want to put 20 on the rest of his field, and then that lets uh, Mandibuzz blindside, which is its uh, primary attack. You know, it's only one energy, but it lets you do 50 damage to anything on the field. 
um, including bench Pokemon. Anything on the field that has damage counters, as a matter of fact. So T-Tar is there just to, like, fucking vomit damage counters onto everything. And then uh, Bisharp is actually there to get powered up from the uh, the damage counter since his first attack uh, is 20. But if they have even one damage counter on him, then it does 50. Now, I'm wondering if there's, like, a Pokemon that would, like, uh, what, what am I thinking? Like, like, swap damage counters from, like, a, amongst their own, I suppose. Kind of like a damage swap, but for their side of the field. I'm kind of wondering if something like that exists. I get the feeling like that would be a good idea for this deck, you know, if it had a Pokepire that you could run it from the bench. I feel like there is, and I'm just not thinking about it. But, I don't know, I'm just kind of rambling at, like, 12 in the afternoon. I got, like, no sleep last night. Don't really regret it. But, um, he decides to end, and I'm really actually, like, more than okay with that. Uh, like, more than you'll ever know. <laughs> Just because, you know, my last hand kind of sucked. Um, I do come into a Bisharp and a Dark Energy, though, so I know that at least my turn will not be completely wasted. <laughs> But um, if he does wake up, I can just go ahead and take him out. And it turns out I actually draw into a Professor Oak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how much uh, energy uh, each of those Chandelures have and whatnot. Because I want to catch one of them out and, you know, probably end up killing it with T-Tar. Uh, T-Tar normally doesn't end up doing the handiwork. But since he's in the active spot, I'm like, you know what? I might as well until I come into a switch. Because I really need to keep it safe. But I don't want to burn off all that energy. I spent a decent amount of time setting it up. So... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just Power Claw for 60, it also, uh, bypasses any Poke Bodies or anything like that, so if Clefa stayed asleep in the active spot, I would've just Power Clawed the shit out of that thing too. It just, it cuts through everything, and, you know, 60 damage for 3 is normally not that good, but when you take that into effect, it's not so bad, so, plus you can put Darkness Energy on it in order to, uh, to boost it up some more, but... What Chandelure does in the lead spot, in case you are not familiar with it and why it is so popular, but it has a poker power called Curse Shadow. And what that lets you do is that lets you put three damage counters on any of your opponent's Pokemon in any way you wish, as long as you're in the active spot. Which is why, um, you know, he's running Metagross, so he puts one Psychic Energy on both of them and, and then just retreats them out as he pleases. Um, Dodria does the exact same thing, but it makes the retreat cost two less because Chandelure has a retreat cost of only two. Um, it brings it down to zero, and it also works well for any other Pokemon as well. So, Dodrio is kind of the soup, like the superior Pokemon, in case you want to run, like, Vile Plume and stuff. Um, I don't know. Actually, that wouldn't work, because they wouldn't get fucking catchers and whatnot. Um, I don't know, just other Pokemon in general. If you're running pure and only Psychic, Metagross is actually kind of cool to be having that with, since it does have some pretty cool attacks, too. Um, for now, I'm not really seeing anything fantastic. I can put a Darkness Energy on that. And I can also catch her into the Metagross, so that's what I'm going to want to do. I want to cripple um, how freely he's able to switch in and out. Plus, you know, with the uh, the Megaton Tail as my third attack, fucking T-Tar gets three attacks because he's, he's a boss. But um, uh, because it's boosted by the Darkness Energy attached to me, it does 130 instead of, you know, 120. Not that it matters because I got an extra 20 on him from the Darkness Howl from earlier. But, uh, you know, in case I didn't, I still would have killed him anyway, so screw him. But, uh, I think we're getting close to, like, the end of the game. Uh, he's gonna try to catch her out something more or less in vain. I mean, he catches out my Bisharp because I don't really have any energy attached to it. But, what he doesn't know is I do have a Darkness Energy and a Pokemon Communication in my hand. So, I'm actually able to just, um, you know, I can just raise this thing up next turn. And he is gonna use Curse Shadow to, uh, to take out the Volby on the bench. I don't mind since I already have another Mandibuzz. Um, set up with one energy, I was like, you know what, anything beyond one is just gonna be, uh, kind of a bonus thing I have going on, since I have the counters on the field, and I just need things to come in and take advantage, but, um, he decides to bring in Cleffa, he's gonna go ahead and Professor Oak out to see if he gets any good hands, but he's not really in a good spot, since I do have, you know, I've got damage counters on things on the field, uh, T-Tar can easily put some more, since I don't have my Cleffa in play anymore, since I think, I think that got killed somewhere along the way owing to one of his cursed shadows. Um, if I remember correctly, but, uh, he's actually going to go ahead and wake up and I can just kill this thing off real freaking easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and peek I'm out, you know, one of my extra people tires. It really doesn't matter since I have an extra, uh, T-tar out in the play, but in case, you know, he somehow pulls some super, super duper miraculous play, then, uh, I peek him out the extra people tire just so I can get a second T-tar going. That would be my plan B, um, <laughs> If anything were to really happen, but finishing blow does 20 plus an extra 70 plus, you know, or no, 20 plus 50 for a total of 70 uh, with the extra 10 thanks to my darkness energy equipped. That is, um, it's pretty good. 
So his chandelier is in here. Now it can attack me next turn, and I do have a resistance to it because I am a uh, part dark type, which is kind of the handy thing about this deck. But he's going to go for his attack, which burns and confuses. Uh, if it paralyzed, that would be a problem. And I think way back in the day, confusion, when you tried to retreat, um, that would have a chance of failing as well. So I'm really glad they took that out. But he's going to junk arm things out. I don't really understand why, to be completely honest. I mean, he just... I guess he figures that the best thing he can probably do is burn and confuse my T-Tar. But the thing is, is, he has damage counters on him already. So I don't mind paying the uh, the three retreat costs to get out of there and just finish the game off if he doesn't put anything on the bench. Which, um, seeing as how he junk armed a Pokemon Collector, which I found kind of weird, when he could have used it to gotten three more cards to junk arm out, I don't know. I just... It's a little odd to me. Um, but I don't get burned or anything like that. And I pull into a switch, which, you know, just adds more insult onto Endurt onto uh, injury but I'm gonna put an extra darkness energy on that just to kind of be you know a uh, last turn dick and uh, just switch out and finish the job with a finishing blow so that actually finishes the game as well since he no longer has any active Pokemon and I thought this narration was unusually well I don't know why I gotta give myself a pat on the back one. this is my first take too so anyways that's the game for today guys I kind of had a type advantage in this one but I can tell you right off the bat that it's not gonna be this way for future games but uh, I hope you kind of understand how this deck kind of works. Um, since I put Rare Candies on it, it moves a little bit quicker and I'm a little more comfortable with running it. Uh, two, I might take out one Evolution Line and then just put more of the other. Uh, maybe take out Bisharp and then put Mandibuzzes or something like that. I don't really know at this point. For now, it worked good enough for a video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you're welcome to leave a like rating, comment, subscribe, do your thing. And um, I think I'll probably be uploading this after my battle video. And then I got Eyebrow Side for 2012 coming up sometime today. So if you haven't seen it, it should be somewhere in my sub boxes. So many videos. Oh my god. I miss you guys. I'm back. Okay, bye.